I'm guessing you already know the stats that email marketing is above the best when it comes to marketing channels and marketing sources to reach your contacts, your leads, and so forth. But my question is, how seriously are you taking email marketing right now? And I'm willing to bet by the end of this episode, if you watch all the way through until the finish line, you're going to have exactly the steps to take to turn your list into listings, i.e. your email list into listings. I want you to imagine somebody who's been generating leads over the course of their career, possibly through pay-per-click activities, possibly sphere of influence, possibly open houses, possibly Zillow or realtor.com or homes.com. I want you to imagine you or somebody you know who's been generating leads, mostly, let's be honest about it, buyer leads over the course of their career. What if you could use email to turn those buyer leads over time into listing opportunities down the road so that you would become the dominant source of listings, a listing dominant agent. Agent. And I don't think you need to hear from me right now how important it is in this market landscape right now. You got a list to last. So today's video is all about email marketing to generate listings. I kind of think of it like this, kind of like email alchemy. If you know what alchemy is, alchemy is the idea of somebody trying to make gold out of stuff that wasn't gold if you remember in grade school. And the idea here is how do you turn your list of buyer leads into listings? Welcome to This Week in Marketing. My name is Jason Pantana. I'm your host and I am so glad you're watching today because this is a critical conversation about how to get more listings, utilizing the tools of the day that have been around and need to be properly utilized like email marketing. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to tap that big red subscribe button. And while you're there, there's a little bell icon right next to it. And if you hit that, it turns on notifications so whenever new episodes like this drop, you get alerted right away and therefore you can get into action right away. Without further ado, we're going to dive into our topic today, email alchemy. How do you turn your list into listings? Marketing is ever evolving and with the emergence of AI, the rate of change is faster than ever. Adapt quickly to AI driven marketing strategies or risk falling behind. This is precisely why we've created the AI Marketing Academy, a four week virtual intensive tailored to integrate AI seamlessly into your marketing strategy. You'll start with unraveling the basics of AI, then you'll get to grips with essential AI tools. And finally, you'll learn how to incorporate these tools into effective real world marketing tactics. Space is limited, don't miss your chance to be a part of the future. Now, some of you might be watching and thinking, I don't have a very large email list. I only have like 500 names or email addresses, or maybe you're just getting started, or maybe you have like 50,000 or more email addresses. No matter where you're at in terms of the size of your email list, today is the day to start. This strategy we're going to get into has elasticity built into it. So here's how it works. The more emails you have, great. That's going to be a better outcome for you. The fewer emails you have, it will still perform around the same ratio of success and it can scale with you over time. Now, here's my first imperative to you. Start getting emails start getting emails, start getting emails. It's important to always be building your audience. Think about it like this. In marketing, there is the message. What is it you want to voice or say into the marketplace? What ideas do you want to inject into the marketplace? The message. And then there's distribution. Distribution is the way in which you can inject that message into the marketplace. Most of you are likely relying upon platforms like Facebook and Instagram where it's their algorithms, it's their rules, and you play in their sandbox, so to speak. But I want you to think for a moment about email marketing where yes, there are inbox rules and spam and all that kind of stuff. In fact, I even have a course called inbox hero. It's part of marketing pro and it's all about how to go from zero to 60 rookie to rockstar when it comes to email marketing. There are intricacies around that, but it goes back to this idea of going from amateur to expert. Email has been around for a long, long time and no matter how big your list is or how small, it's important to start putting a focus on growing the list because that's an audience you own. Again, yes, there are rules and inboxes, but so much fewer rules, so much less uh, anything getting in the way of you and your customer. Start building your list. Uh, that's what Matt Curtis, one of our rock star coaching clients, has done. He runs the number one team in the state of Alabama. And Matt Curtis is absolutely crushing it with his email list. Now, Matt has a large email list because he's been generating leads over his entire career. Buyer leads, open house leads, 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 leads that have opted in. And so now he's at the critical moment of coming up with content to distribute to them through email so they actually start to gain consideration and think about Matt Curtis and oh, what about Matt Curtis? And he's building his brand with email marketing. What Matt does is he sends a 53,000 person email list two emails a week. And he has been for years. And the strategy I'm going to teach you, the numbers are insane. If you look at data from the last six months, he's generating about 24 to 26 listing appointments per quarter consistently. His opt-out rate, sending two emails a week, mass emails. He uses a company called ActiveCampaign. There are other programs like MailChimp 
or Constant Contact or other email service providers you might consider. He uses Active Campaign. I have no favorites per se. Uh, but you would think that, hey, two emails a lot, that's a lot. Two emails a week, that seems like a lot. But actually, his opt out rate is only 0.3%. That is about a third the benchmark, meaning he's outperforming other competitors by 3x and he's doing emails twice a week. Every Friday, he sends a weekly email roundup, and it is effectively a newsletter or a content digest of what he's been publishing across the web throughout the week. So it includes links to blogs, it includes links to YouTube videos, and helpful content he's been producing. And then within that email, you'll also see what we call a nested call to action. In between the helpful content, he'll put a call to action around a home valuation or scheduling a consultation to see if anybody in between looking at the content decides, you know what, I'm in market for that. I could benefit from that right now. And it's a super smart way to not be overt in terms of how he asks for the business, but also not be a secret agent and not hide from asking for the business. I'm thinking about the book that Gary Vaynerchuk wrote, Jab, 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 Right Hook. The idea of a jab, jab, jab is a give, give, give. You've got to give more than you ask in marketing. And the moment it becomes lopsided, you become salesy because you're asking more than you're giving. The right hook though is that call to action. You have to know when it's time, when you've created the demand to make the offer to provide the services, like, hey, we should meet to talk about listing your home. You may be interested in selling your home. You may be curious about what your home is worth. So Matt sends out this weekly email every single Friday, and it is a newsletter that's just loaded with valuable resources. It has images of thumbnails of the videos that you can click on and go look at the video on YouTube. It has links to see upcoming listings, being mindful of clear cooperation, of course, but links to up see upcoming listings. It has links to upcoming open houses. It features a few of his listings, and then it gives, gives, gives a lot of video first content. So the first email Matt is sending every week is a weekly newsletter. He calls it a weekly real estate roundup. And it's so consistent that his entire population of subscribers have become reliant upon Matt Curtis as the definitive resource for all things real estate in the Huntsville, Madison, Alabama marketplace. They start to expect it. You would, you would know this. If they didn't like the content, they'd be unsubscribing from it. They'd be opting out, but they aren't. And the reason they aren't is because there's a value in the content. Value is something that gets perceived by a customer. You can't say to somebody, this is a really valuable email. They tell you it's valuable because they don't opt out. And that's the nature of Matt's emails. He is giving so much incredible content across the web, but we know the average person is active across seven different social media platforms. He maybe, maybe, maybe 10% of his followers see a given post on Facebook or Instagram. And that's being incredibly optimistic. It would be almost irresponsible if Matt did not repurpose his content in an email to ensure that everybody sees it because it's kind of like this. If a tree falls in the forest and nobody's around to watch it fall, did it make a sound? And the answer is, well, nobody was around to confirm or deny whether or not it made a sound. And from a marketing standpoint, this is sort of a joke I'm making that, hey, if nobody sees your video on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, then it's not having any kind of an impact on your marketing. There are many of you who might be feeling a resistance to, I don't want to inundate people. I don't want to smother people in my content. They'll see it when they're ready, but that's not the way algorithms work these days. Email marketing is one of the most effective ways to put your content in front of your audience and then let the content do what it does. It's going to position you as a consummate expert in your marketplace, as the knowledge broker. It's going to attract more opportunities. And I would also tell you this, that if you make content that is geared for sellers, that content will naturally begin to attract sellers. So guess what kind of content Matt Curtis is making? You guessed it. It is seller focused content. And you may be thinking now like, well, hey, hang on, Jason, I have two questions. One, I want to know what the second email is, which I'm going to get to that he sends every single week. But two, these are buyer leads. Weren't they buying a house? And the answer is maybe. But think about what you understand of leads in general. Somebody raises their hand to say, hey, I'm interested in seeing that property, or they, they fill out some kind of a form online, and all of a sudden, you have a buyer lead. And it's somebody who has maybe a lot of intent or just a little bit of intent to potentially buy a house. And what a lot of agents do, and this is a mistake that I've seen so much over my career as a coach, is most agents will work the leads pretty effectively in the beginning, but then they'll quickly abandon the cause and say, mm, this is a bad lead, low quality lead, but they're failing to account for time. 
the lead is likely to mature over time. So it's this is a long game. What Matt is doing is playing the long game. What's more than that, it's not just about waiting for the lead to mature. It's also about realizing that, hey, people's needs and wants when it comes to real estate change and evolve over time. Just because somebody wanted to buy a house four years ago doesn't mean that's still what they're planning to do today. They may have decided, they may have already bought the house or they may not have bought a house or they may be renting or they may have done something else and they may be in market to potentially sell a house. That's what Matt's strategy proves and that's what so many of our rock star coaching clients are finding out when they're emailing their list over time. What's happening is if you offer seller focused content to that list, it will attract seller opportunities because people's needs and wants evolve over time. Buyers will eventually become sellers if you play the long game. That's the point I'm trying to stress. You've got to leverage the tools of the day. Email is likely your best marketing channel to get in front of an audience with the fewest inhibiting factors like algorithms and all those different uh, things that can stop you when it comes to reaching your audience on Instagram or on Facebook or on some other platform. Email, email, email. It's, it's the GOAT, the greatest of all time when it comes to marketing channels. And again, you might be thinking, boy, my takeaway right now is I need to start building my list. I need to get really serious about my email list. Sometimes I find agents, and this is normal, you're looking to get a sale. So you're looking for where's that low hanging fruit opportunity right now. And it can cause you to have sort of a short sightedness versus a far sightedness in terms of being able to see out into the long game. What's the long game for you when it comes to listing attraction? And how are you strategically now with every lead you get, buyer or seller, how are you nurturing them for life so that when their needs or new needs emerge and surface, like wanting to sell a house, you are absolutely the top of mind agent. Now, Matt sends two emails a week. One is that Friday roundup newsletter email and it gives more than it asks. The second email is on every Monday. Matt sends a text only. It's just text, there's no images, it's not very long. A straight up call to action every single Monday. And you may be thinking, why Monday? Well, because for the average American household, for instance, most real estate conversations occur over the weekend. People are talking about, should I fix this house or should I move on? They've, during the week, people are busy. They're running kids around, they're going to work, they're busy. And so sometimes talking about real estate and future plans, especially a plan as big as selling a house, can have to wait for the weekend. So what Matt does is he cashes in on all those conversations come Monday morning, whereby there's been people in their house talking about, should we just repair the windows? Should we replace the windows? Well, then there's the deck as well. What about that? Maybe we should just sell the place. The market's good right now. Let's just sell it and go get the next house we want. And so what Matt does is he walks right into the heart of that conversation every Monday with a call to action. Now, it's not a punch you in the face kind of call to action. It's not a right hook. It's an interesting thought provoking question. It's an assessment of a market condition that's happening right now, but it does make a direct appeal to, hey, you may be somebody who's been considering this. And based upon you considering this and these details happening right now could be an ideal time to talk to one of our team members about the possibility of selling your house. And if you're interested, click the link below. And so what's happening is 24 to 26 times per quarter. So call that roughly 100 times a year. Matt is generating listing appointments directly attributable to this email list leads he's generated over his entire career. I find that to be efficient because a lot of agents, and no offense if it's you, but a lot of agents are wasteful with leads. They abandon them and say, oh, I was a bad lead. They weren't serious. Well, things could change down the road. What's your strategy to never stop marketing? What's your strategy to remain omnipresent, the top of mind agent of choice with every single person in your database? Your leads, your contacts, buyers and sellers, all of them. And I would advise to you that you should seriously look at email. What's your email marketing strategy for 2024? And to answer that, you might have to ask a bigger, broader question. What's your content marketing strategy for 2024? Because guess what? If you're not making the videos, the blogs, the content that you're publishing across the web, then you effectively have nothing to put in your emails. But if you turn yourself into a content machine, a content generation machine, and if you look at email as arguably the most important channel for distributing that content, what's gonna happen is over time, you're going to attract more and more listings. You got a list to last. Whoever controls the inventory controls the marketplace. What are your strategies now to generate listings, but also what are your strategies long-term? Think of this video today as kind of like 
investing in a certificate of deposit or some kind of a long-term yielding account. This is not going to likely get you a bunch of listings tomorrow. But six months from now, a year from now, over time, what would happen if you got serious about generating email addresses and marketing consistently, nurturing consistently, remembering that you get what your content attracts and then doing the marketing through the emails over time so that you have a steady flow, a predictable flow of listing opportunities. Turn your list into listings. I'm curious, what are your takeaways from this episode today, I want to know in the comments and make sure to share this with one of your peers or one of your buddies in the marketplace who could really level up their email marketing game. Thank you so much for watching. Until next week, this is This Week in Marketing.